back in the church again, just for a little sit down. I found some lovely conkers outside. From the tree, they just fall into the to the ground. St Andrew's Church. Yeah, it takes you back to um, when you were a child, seeing the conkers, you know, playing conkers. Back in the 19, early 70s and whatever. And so here we are. It struck me today that the case that they've chosen out of the six no verdict cases is the, one of the only ones where Evans Evans's evidence isn't involved. And I thought, well, is it because they don't want to risk putting him on the stand again because people know, can see now, what a basket case he is, what a fraud and a charlatan he is. But it's very odd that they've chosen this one case to attempt to prosecute again. The case of Baby K. At the trial it was said that their principal witness in that case, Dr Jai Aram, it was said that his evidence was tainted and unreliable. Tainted and unreliable. And that's the case they go with. This isn't an air embolus case. It's nothing to do with Evans, even though he he made his comments on that, and even though he chose that one as well. He chose that one as well as his part of his 15. Why? Why did he do that? And it just so happens that that's one where Dr. Jayaram is the witness. It's the one that, in an interview, Dr. Jayaram says that was the moment that he actually knew that something was going wrong. And he suspected. You can't trust any of these people in terms of the timeline of what they say, when they felt this and when they felt that. They're performing in front of the cameras, this Jayaram character, as is Evans in his, his interviews as well. They're, they're performing. They're performing and they're letting things slip and they're lying. Some people are of the mind that trying to prosecute this case will actually be the, the unravelling of everything. But I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if that's the case, but um, clearly what we're hoping for is that the appeal supersedes that in any case, so it doesn't, it doesn't happen that all convictions are quashed and Lucy is released before that retrial can ever get off the ground. And the attempt of the CPS to put out a message giving a generalised idea that you're not allowed to talk about the case, well, which one then? What aspect of it? Because so much of it's in the public domain, so much of it is a matter of record already. So you've got... you've got statements from the trial that it's a matter of public record, you're not allowed to restate those, you're not allowed to state a fact that it was said at the trial that Jayaram's evidence was tainted and unreliable. You're not allowed to state as a fact that this case didn't involve any of Evans's sick, weird theories, which it didn't. These are just facts. So to state any fact that's, that is known, publicly known, how can that be contempt of court? They're publicly known. Anyway, I, I'm meant to come here to uh, try to relax, <laughs> meditate a bit, I suppose. I've just sent a short, short letter to the prison where I understand Lucy Letby is being held. 
just a short net letter of support saying that there are lots of people, more, more and more people all the time that are, are... And I've noticed some on Twitter where people are saying, I've changed my mind, I've changed my mind. And this is happening. And it will grow. It will grow. And it is growing. Yeah. Thank you for all your comments and thoughts. And I've got to get back to analysing the Evans stuff. Hopefully that will soon come to an end. I mean, it's just more of the same in a sense. He's just shooting himself in the foot with some of the things he's saying. It has to happen. It's like a natural law that people who are deceivers, frauds, charlatans, it, it gets exposed, as it did with Professor Meadow. I don't know if he's still a professor, but he's exposed. He was removed from the GMC. He was exposed. And there's a couple of other. Southall, that's another fraudulent expert witness that caused a great deal of harm. And there's another one as well who went abroad. I can't remember his name. I don't have my notes to hand. So, yeah, they get exposed. Ex sorry, they get exposed in the end. They do, don't they? They do. They do. They get exposed in the end. I just wanted to say that we pray for the well-being and strength and ongoing courage of Lucy Letby and her family against this wicked, wicked and evil onslaught, effectively by the state now, but that it will be overturned and injustices will be righted and then justice will be done in terms of the people that created this monstrous injustice to this young woman and her family. And that will happen. I just want it to happen as soon as possible. I've not come up this far. All I have actually, when I took communion a few times, turning in autumn's here of course the conkers and such a terrible injustice will not subsist it will not stand it can't it cannot and more and more people incrementally are waking up to it I was thinking this morning that I imagine, I don't know, of course, I imagine some of those jurors are troubled, are troubled by their, their finding of guilt, it's bothering them. I'm not, necess not necessarily saying all of them are, but I imagine some of them are, some of them are. I'm not blaming them. The trial was conducted in such a way as to utterly overwhelm them with a very large number of incredibly weak, tendentious, weak and ridiculous cases all merged together to overwhelm the jury emotionally. And then we have the absolute failings of the defence. That can't be denied. It was a manifest failure for reasons we know not. We could suspect they seem too grievous to me to be incompetent, but then we'll have to put that to one side. I think I'll leave it there. Try another little sit now. Take care, everyone. All the best. <laughs>